guys and welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do another talky type video, kind of in the same fashion as my Let's Talk About It closures video. Um, so I just wanted to go over some inexpensive literature that you might already have or relatives might have in their house. Um, even if you find it at a thrift store, which you can find practically all of these, except for some books, I will make an exception. These are kind of like specialty books that you might have to order or buy it at a bookstore. But like I said, most of these, somebody's relative has them, or you can buy them at a thrift store. I see them all the time at the thrift store. Super inexpensive, but they are super helpful in, um, you know, helping you learn more on your own, self-guided about sewing. So here are some things that I wanted to, to show you. Again, keeping this relatively cheap, simple, um, lots of information. Um, I'll start off with, with this book. Um, many of you grew up in the 80s and the 90s. You probably had these child craft books. <laughs> uh, it came in a whole series like a, like a, back in the day, ordering like Encyclopedia Britannica's were like, it was huge or whatever. Anyways, if you're, old, if you're my age, you're older, you understand. But if you have this book, which you can find at thrift stores, this one is the Make and Do number 11 book out of the, like I said, it came like a huge series of books. Um, this one does have some really super basic sewing things. Um, on page 155 of this book, it talks about helpful hints, names of, of some basic tools, um, how to start a stitch, a couple like running stitches, whip stitches, uh, back stitch, satin stitch, things like that. Very helpful. And then of course it has little projects in there too that you could practice all this stuff on. Then it also has a section about weave, knot, braiding, uh, macrame. I don't know if you've seen a lot of stuff circulating like on Facebook or Pinterest right now with those really beautiful macrame curtains. Um, which is basically just, you know, different types of, it's just rope that's woven to make real pretty patterns or you do it for survival techniques to make like bags in the wilderness or things like that, some string. So just, you know, it's got some weaving, some knotting, uh, braiding, how to do that. Um, again, more projects once you kind of get those down. So I'm kind of going in order here from like easiest to some extreme things um another book that i've had that i and of course i've gone through all these books i'm not just saying this for the hell of it to make a video like these are books that i legitimately use throughout the years to try and self teach myself and learn apart from learning off youtube but these are you know books so here's here's another one this one you can definitely find this one at a thrift store in the book section it's called stitch by stitch a uh, home library of sewing, knitting, crochet, and needle craft. This one's number one, and it's from Torstar Books. While it does come off, and most of the most of this book is about like crochet and needlework, there is a really good section in here that goes on uh, straightening fabric. Um, a lot of times, if you buy fabric, sometimes if you try and match up end to end, you know, when you're folding stuff to cut a pattern. Some edges might not meet, and so the fabric might be kind of wonky or like pulled out of place. Or if you can't find, if there's no sell, if there's no visible selvage, like they chopped off the selvage, and you're trying to figure out like, well, which way is like the crosswise crosswise grain and the length grain and all that stuff. This part in here tells you how to find that, and it starts on page 46 of the Stitch by Stitch number one book. Um, it goes over needle and thread numbers at a glance, best fabrics for beginners, and then here it, it basically talks about knowing your fabric, understanding uh, the crosswise fold, lengthwise fold, selvage, uh, bias fold, what does that mean, strength, straightening fabric before cutting out, this is what I was talking about, um, and it talks about, you know, like pulling, pulling the strings to find those, um, selvage, crosswise, like all that good stuff. Um, you know, it talks about tension in the machine, trouble, early troubleshooting, you know, if you're uh, sewing something and it's just, it's make it's making the, the fabric 
scrunch or bunch up and your tension's a little too much so you have to kind of like ease off on that um and then it goes it has a little section here about making your own bias strips instead of buying them um it's just like it's very helpful um it doesn't it does have some sewing projects in it but uh, again this this book is mainly about needle needlework and crochet but that one section there does have a lot of really good information um to get started before you start sewing things so this one is another one of my sewing bibles i have another one right now which i'll show you this one definitely if you go to a thrift store or a goodwill or sale saudi or something i guarantee you will find this book okay it's, it's everywhere and it's probably like two bucks or something like that so useful oh my gosh this book has amazing information in it if you want to get a little more into sewing like you're getting past beginner going to intermediate or whatever oh I'm sorry so this is a reader's digest yes reader's digest does anybody know what that is do we even have readers digest anymore I doubt it but anyway this was a reader's digest complete guide to sewing let me open up my bookmark can I do bookmarks on spots Again, um, just like the other book, this one goes in a little more detail about sewing tools, your different chalks and tracing wheels, scissors. Um, there's lots and lots of scissors once you really get into sewing. This doesn't even cover, like, I mean, there's still more scissors not mentioned in this section. But this is pretty good to, <clears throat> you know, if you need more tools as you're increasing your knowledge about sewing and things like that um, another part of this book that i bookmarked that i thought was very helpful that came from this book that wasn't covered yet in the previous books was the accessories i love this book because it goes over the accessories like if you buy a machine and it comes with all these different feet you can come here on uh, page 38 and 39 of the reader's digest book and it'll talk to you about the uh, stitch pattern cams or discs if you have an older machine, they use discs, um, chain stitch attachments, the plates and the feet, and then all the different accessories, like different embroidery foot, buttonhole foot, uh, what else? Pin tuck foot, narrow hammer, cording, what else? Just, oh my gosh, it's just so much. The walking foot, roller foot, so much good stuff. And then, of course, it tells you how to do seams, how to work the corners, mm, work the corners. Uh, work corner seams, additional techniques, finishing techniques. It's got so much information. Like, it's this is an amazing book. Um, different styles of buttonholes, doing um, let me see, doing zippers. I'm sorry, it's like everything's shiny. Just doing different zippers. It's 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 really um, an all-inclusive book for I'd say the intermediate sewers. So, <clears throat> some specialty books, real quick before I get to like my the ultimate my other ultimate sewing bible, which I referred to so many times. Um, okay, well I won't go on and on about it. Let me talk about specialty books. Um, when I wanted to start learning about how to do period pieces and learn more about costuming and corsets things like that, um, I've had these books for like I don't want to say ten years. Um, I had messaged uh, Tracy Robertson's of Azac Designs, their Azrael's Accomplice Designs, um, and she got back with me, and I asked her, like, hey, I want to get learn more about, because she does a lot of period costuming, like goth, J-rock type, J-pop type clothing, and I was like, well, hey, I really want to learn more about period costuming and corsets and all these, you know, foundation pieces. Um, you know, like what what would what would you uh, suggest to me? So she sent me a whole list of books, and I bought I think I bought all of them. Maybe I want to say about like ninety percent of what she recommended to me. Um, one of one of the very valuable books. I still use it. In fact, I have a video on one of the patterns from here, which is the um, the pocketed what is it? The pocketed hoops. My goodness, pocket hoops. Yeah. I have a, a video in, in my channel doing the pocket hoops, which I did mention that I took the pattern from this, and I'll show you how to um, translate that to like a paper pattern. 
because they do have uh, historically accurate patterns in this book. It's called Corsets and Crinolines by uh, Nora Waugh. Amazing book. Like it's it's not just a pattern book. It it has excerpts from turn of the century magazines, lingerie magazines, talking adver old advertisements talking about the benefits of this well worn corset or this pocket hoop skirt. It is such an interesting read if you're kind of into that nerdy stuff. Um, so here's this on page 48. This is where I took the, the pattern to make the pocket hoop skirt. And I do have the link for that video in, I'll put it in the description. Um, it, again, it talks about uh, references to like different, uh, you know, just tops in uh, turn of the century. I mean, it covers it all the way from like old Renaissance times to, you know, the Victorian era undergarments. It's so amazing. Um, here are some more long line body type corsets and um, just foundation garments. And, the, and they do have the patterns as you can see here. You use this as a guide to, to measure these out and then you can translate it on a pattern. And then it has uh, photos. It's just such an amazing book. Um, just funny little pictures of old advertising. It's like such a cool book. Like if you want to start learning about hardcore legit corsetry construction, uh, historically accurate costuming, I 100% this book. 100, 100%. Another book that she had books that she had recommended to me were was um, I have two of them. Like one, this one's the, the little corset book. Um, it's a workbook on period underwear by uh, Bonnie Holt Ambrose, and same author here, the little bodice book. And again, these two books, amazing. The little bodice book goes over. Now again, I wouldn't try to attempt these projects on, on these specialty books that I'm talking about until you're probably like immediate to an intermediate to advanced stage because then you'll know how to tra translate you know just numbers on a paper and a picture to actual paper patterns and how to grade it um, <clears throat> uh, what else oh so it talks about uh, it has different patterns well, it'll give you the picture It'll give you a picture of what you are about to make, uh, just some wording on, on the boning, simple boning, complex boning, um, where you need to make your markings and stuff like that, um, how to add the cording in, what, just like a bunch of different things, sleeves, <clears throat> how to finish like armholes, like it's such a cool little book. I'm trying to find it where it has pictures of the product. Oh, here we go. So like, here's like, it, it has a pattern for this in this little book. And again, I mean, you would, you're like, at some point you're gonna get good to where you can you pull stuff like that and make it. The little corset book, again, amazing resource. Um, it goes through, or like different periods of corsets. This is an 1890 corset. It has the patterns and everything here amazing book it tells you how to make it how to add the size conversion chart the metal stays that you need for these um, here's an 1860 pattern like, it's such an amazing book uh the little bodice book and the little corset book by bonnie holt ambrose amazing books and another one of my specialty books that i unfortunately have not had a chance to make anything from it yet just because uh i can't afford all the lovely materials to do so but i have read through it many times and it this is an amazing book too this is making latex clothes by uh i think it's how you pronounce her name cyan kate mooney sorry if i'm butchering your name it goes over basic techniques of doing latex clothes it has you know the abbreviations how to do hems you know all I mean, doing latex clothes is slightly different, obviously, from sewing because you are gluing pieces together. Um, how to do darts in your <clears throat> latex clothes. It talks about embellishments, appliques, how to do piping with latex, 
curved, curved boning, um, <clears throat> how to do simple skirts and shirts, and then it also has like some really cool photos in it of, um, of projects, you know. I just, I love this book. If you're into, if you want to learn how to make latex clothes, I would say you really should get this book. It, it seems like, you know, from what I've read from it, it, it seems very simple to understand and it goes over what materials that you need, the proper glues, the talcs, brushes, things like that for the application when you're doing latex clothes. Now, this book, again, another find that your old aunt probably has, your grandmother probably has in her old sewing room. I would say to everybody had this book back in the day. This is the Vogue Sewing Book Second Bible. Okay. This this book is when you want to take sewing more seriously and go to an advanced level. This book even has um, couture techniques in it in the back, which I will show you amazing book and probably super inexpensive at a thrift store so basically let's say you want to get super duper knee deep in sewing or even designing i'd say this book kind of goes into when you're already at the level when you are just making your own types of clothes for yourself it goes over pattern um, grading um, even up here in the beginning, which I didn't bookmark because it's, it's such it's such an amazing thing. Even if you are designing clothes for yourself, you really should look over uh, color theory just in the basics. You know, you don't have to go too much in if you don't want to. But color theory is an amazing thing, especially when you're putting together outfits or you want to match what color. It goes over the elements of color, your primary, secondary, tertiary, tints and shades, hues, intensities. Um, it goes over, you know, your monochromatic, analogous, complementary colors. Um, it just, and the, the color wheel, which is, it shows right here. Texture, print. Like, it starts going really analytic until, into the, the idea of designing your own clothes and sewing at a much higher level. <clears throat> This is my favorite book, so I'm going to talk a little bit about this. Again, I'm sorry, it's the Vogue sewing book. That's just how it comes. If you see it in your thrift store, grab grab this book. This book is life, I'm telling you. Um, skipping over, again, if you are of a certain shape or you have certain problematic areas or you're short, you're tall, it goes over the silhouettes that, that match or that are flattering for your body type. And it, you know, if you're short or tall, these are the sleeves, or this is what will work best for you according to the Vogue sewing book. Now some of this stuff, of course, is slightly outdated, but that doesn't make it wrong. You know, it's, it's, it's not a bad book. Like, so a lot of this stuff applies still to this day. Um, how to choose, <clears throat> The correct fabric, fabric with conversion chart. Like, I'm telling you, this gets into some pretty hardcore stuff. So, on this, and then on this other part of the book where it says how to choose correct fabric, then it also goes into the art of stain removal. It gets really in-depth about different types of stains, how to get them out. Again, super amazing information. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, and on page 126, it, it starts going through the whole thing of grading your patterns, uh, flat pattern adjustments that you find um, in the store. The book also goes over um, the names of different sleeves, all the names of all these different collars, sleeves, uh, styles of blouses, so that way you know the proper terms when you are designing something or, or you know, or you want, or you have a picture of what the sleeve looks like, looks like in your head, but you really have, know how, you really don't have an idea of what it's actually called. It has that whole thing in here, how to press, how to hem, how to do finishings, how to do proper buttonholes, and, the, and then again, how, as I was saying in the beginning, 
at the end of this book, it has um, couture techniques, which is it's called the custom touch couture techniques, which is on page six, 363. And it just talks about hidden details. Um, they're talking about uh, shape, shape keepers, which is just other things that you put inside, like to keep shape, like there's lead weights, strips, chain weights. Uh, lingerie strap guards, inside waist stays. Um, it says here, waists are used to preserve the design lines of a garment and to prevent it from shifting during wear. So, I mean, it, 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 gets, it gets in there. Um, really fine fastenings, different uh, finishing touches where it talks about Hong Kong finishing. Lace and trims, horsehair braid. Again, if you're doing like evening wear, horsehair braid is just like, I'd say a must. It, it, it really takes your garments to the next level when you have horsehair to help with the structure like in a ham or something like that or in a, like a peplum. Like it's really, really cool. Um, trims, it goes over trims, extreme, how to handle extremely curved hems, like break braided stuff. Like seriously, this book... Mm, it goes into some serious stuff. It has a section on beading. Like, this book is the most amazing book. Um, and then it has, you know, a glossary of fashion terms. The it goes over the names of different types of fabrics and what it's best used for. All right, so I'll have to end this video because my son's getting a little upset. But, um, so yeah, those books, um, I, I mean, obviously I know that there's hundreds of books probably printed every year. And there's better ones even now on the market. But these are the books that I got started with that you could probably find, like I said, in a thrift store or get it for free off a relative. Um, and they have a lot of valuable information from so super beginner to pretty advanced, especially in that Vogue book. If you have that Vogue book, Vogue book and really study it, um, you could really take your sewing to the next level. With, I mean, like I said, it, it really just covers just like everything like everything that you need to know about proper garment making it really just covers all that so i would say that one and the reader's digest one are my favorite that's really what i wanted to share with you today uh you know i'm all about trying to promote people to learn on their own and and do things for themselves you know, the resources are out there i gave you a couple ones that you can get for free or super cheap at a thrift store so i hope that was helpful if any of you were looking on some cheap resources besides the web hope that was helpful all right thanks for watching have a good day. Bye.